Galaxy S is Samsung's main flagship device and it shows. This is probably the best device on the market in 2016. It has the best screen and arguably the best camera. Combine that with an amazing design and build quality and you got the perfect phone. But anyway, let's dive deeper. This is the best looking phone Samsung has ever designed and maybe even the best looking phone period. With an aluminum frame that is sandwiched between two pieces of Gorilla Glass 4, it makes it look beautiful, but also prone to scratches and fingerprints. More on that later. On the bottom, there's a mediocre speaker and a headphone jack. The reason the S7 speaker is not as good as the S6 is because of the IP68 water and dust resistance rating. This means that there's a thin film behind the speaker that stops water and dust from getting in, but it also muffles the sound. Unfortunately, there's no USB Type-C port. There's still the older USB 2.0. On the top is a SIM tray and microphone, with the right side containing the power button and the left has the volume rockers. And while the frame doesn't scratch easily, the front and back are a different story. They can scratch from just being left on the table, so be careful. Fingerprints seem better than last year on the S6, but I would still recommend a case for the back and a screen protector for the front. The screen is probably the best part of this phone. The 5.1 inch 2K Super AMOLED display is the sharpest, brightest, and best looking screen I have ever seen. The Super AMOLED display basically means that it is more power efficient while providing better colors. If you don't like the saturated colors, you can also turn the screen mode to basic to get the most color accurate screen on the market. The screen is easily seen outdoors and also gets very dim when you need it, but my only complaint is when you are at peak brightness the saturation goes down, but that is just nitpicking. Unlike the S6, the S7 has two different processors, the quad-core Snapdragon 820 or the octa-core Exynos 8890. Unfortunately, one is much better than the other. The Exynos 8890 not only proved better in pure speed, but also RAM management and battery efficiency. Luckily, only the American and Japanese models have the Snapdragon 820. I have the Exynos 8890 because I'm in Canada. But, performance is otherwise what you expect of a 2016 flagship smartphone. It is slightly faster than other Android phones, but not enough for you to notice a difference. The S7 runs Android 6.0 Marshmallow with Samsung's TouchWiz skin out of the box. While TouchWiz has gotten a lot of hate over the years, they really have refined it this year. Maybe even to the point of swaying overstock Android users. There are some really neat new features such as the always on display which can display the time and date at all times. Unfortunately, at this point, it can't do much more. Maybe in the future, it'll get updates so it can get notifications and further improved functionality. There's also an SD card slot, but it doesn't allow for adoptable storage, which is kind of strange, but it's still great for storing pictures and videos. The S7 also comes with an improved fingerprint scanner. I find it's not quite as accurate as the Nexus 6P, but it is one of the fastest. This camera is amazing. To launch it, just simply double tap the home button and it will come up almost immediately. With instant autofocus, crazy sharp images, and great low light pictures, the S7's 12 megapixel camera is hard to beat. With a wide f1.7 aperture and large pixel size, low light images come out much brighter and sharper than competitors. Here are a few samples. <laughs> While video is good, I would say it's not quite as strong as the pictures. It is sharp, but just doesn't seem to be on the same amazing quality of the photos. This is definitely not a bad video camera, but just not as good as the still images are. With the non-removable 3000 mAh battery, the S7 gets around 3.5 to 4 hours of screen on time. While this is not amazing, it is around 20% better than last year on the S6. However, it drains much faster when using cellular data or processor intensive tasks like gaming. If you are just watching videos on Wi-Fi, you could get around 9-10 to 10 hours, which is quite incredible. This is the best phone around, and it only has one major flaw, the price. At $750 off contract, it is one of the most expensive phones around. With budget options like the OnePlus 3 and Huawei P9 clocking in at several hundred dollars lower, is this phone still worth it? It depends on you. If you find the screen and camera to be the most important parts of a phone, then I say yes. If you just want a good enough phone, then I wouldn't recommend it as there isn't enough of a difference for the extra couple hundred dollars you have to spend to get.